when you think of music in video games, you probably think of Super Mario Bros, Tetris and Street Fighter 2, to name a few. These games have tracks that are widely regarded as the best in video games brief, but remarkable history. However, as technology have advanced and soundtracks have become a more important part of the storytelling process, they have changed dramatically. Music is a tool for controlling emotions and establishing the tone of a history. Many film fans regard the soundtrack as a foundation for setting the scene. This is also true in video games. Because of the nature of video games, they provide a more immersive experience than a film. They are in charge of the character's actions rather than simply watching them unfold. Some games, however, allow you to play without a sound. As a result, it is critical for a video game developer to have a soundtrack that can create an atmosphere that will captivate the player. In recent years, game developers, particularly the horror genre, have mastered the creation of a terrifying ear soundtrack, an atmosphere that keeps you on the edge of your seat. Games like Dead Space already have a frightening concept and story. When you add the soundtrack, the tension dials goes all the way up to 11. The composers dissect the Dead Space soundtrack here, provided with more information about their approach to sound design within the game. The use of atmospheric soundtracks is not limited to the horror genre. Many actions and first-person shooting games have embraced the idea that a driving soundtrack can greatly enhance the player's experience. Consider the most recent Doom game. It was a reboot of this historic franchise, which has lost its way and had changed the type of game it was. The reboot had returned to its roots, of constant movement and total chaos while hunting demons and facing boss battles. Doom was a huge hit with players. Mick Gordon's award-winning soundtrack played a significant role in this. With songs like Rip and Tear, it is easy to see why. Just consider hearing that while running around with hellish demons on your tail. Many other gaming soundtracks cannot compete with the way it draws you in, creating an adrenaline rush. Grand Theft Auto is widely regarded as one of, if not the greatest video game franchise ever created. The soundtrack is how it is presented to the player, it's something that is frequently overlooked. Grand Theft Auto has a diverse collection of radio stations from which the player can select and listen to while driving. This is a method for representing soundtrack to the player in a more realistic setting. Many other games have adopted and expanded on this concept. Science Row 2, for example, has the same real-world scenario of radio stations in cars that you can choose from, but they have an added bonus of allowing you to create your own mixtapes with any of the songs of the game. The player is now in charge of the curation. The sounds of early ships such as programmable sound generators or PSG or FM synthesis chips were once used to create early video game music. These constraints gave rise to the chiptune music style, which became the sound of the first video games. With technological advancement, video game music has expanded to include a wider range of sounds. Music can be heard in video games on the title screen, menus, and during gameplay. Game soundtracks can also change based on the player's actions or situations, such as indicating missed actions in rhythm games, informing the player that they are in danger or rewarding them for certain achievements. Audio has been an essential part of video games since their inception, and the progression of music in this context has been as spectacular as substantial as the advancements in visuals. When you fire up the lastest AAA first-person shooter or launch a slot game through an online casino, you can expect an immersed audiovisual experience. So how have the technology and fashion influenced video game music and what does the future hold? The earliest gaming system had little to no music relying instead on primitive sound effects to convey the player's emotions of actions and suspense. The Magnavox Odyssey had no output capability, while the Atari 2600 had two channels of sound output and even the superior Nintendo Entertainment System 
had only three channels for composers to work with. Despite these constraints, some fairly sophisticated video game scores were emerging by the late 1980s, even if they could only be presented to players via machines with limited polyphonic potential. Franchises such as The Legend of Zelda and Super Mario began to solidify the idea that music could be the keystone of the overall experience, with compositors Koji Kondo playing a key role in establishing credibility for this genre during its infancy. Since the release of the first game in the series, music has been an integral part of the experience. The majority of the game's original soundtrack have received critical acclaim from video game magazines to professional music critics. Along with original soundtracks, many compilations and arranged albums have been released to critical acclaim over the years. The music for the Final Fantasy video game series has been lighting up concert halls and inspire a new generation of classic music fans since its inception in 1987, with great composers such as Nobuo Uematsu. The level of interest in these game results should not be underestimated. Concerts featuring Final Fantasy music sell out all over the world, with Uematsu frequently in attendance and a fan base that most pop stars would envy. It is also the first piece of video game music to be inducted into the classic FM Hall of Fame, debuted in 2012. Indeed, many argue that the constraints of this early era of video games were actually beneficial to significantly increase creativity, and the products of the time are still highly regarded today. The 1990s saw a slew of technological advancements that amplified the impact of video game music, New Nintendo and Sega console generation introduced a cutting-edge audio chips capable of recreating synthesized orchestral scores that were richer, more complex, and capable of accompanying all of the other audio effects required to bring top titles to life. The introduction of a CD-based game storage with Sega Saturn and the Sony PlayStation allow it for more full-fledged audio recordings of real-world performances to be integrated into games, as well as providing developers and compositors with far more storage capabilities to work with, allowing for more tracks to be included. This decade also saw the development of stronger links between in-game music and the environments that the players explore in real time. Each level in Nintendo 64's Banjo-Kazooie, for example, had not only one unique musical theme from the compositor Grant Kirkhope, but multiple versions of themes adapted to suit the context, whether in cave, underwater, or in battle with enemies. In short, music was no longer just an accompaniment to the game, but was just an integral part of its design. Over the last two decades, video game music has remained an important component in determining the quality and artistic value of any title. It is also an aspect of this industry that has seen its own retrospective trends, with new teams of developers joining forces to create fresh experiences heavily inspired by the games they played as children. Just as the 8-bit and 16-bit inspired graphics are frequently used in games like Stardew Valley, Terraria and Broforce, so it is the video game music styled after earlier eras popular. Even big budget releases still favor orchestral scores over chiptune beats. Video game music has progressed to the point where there are almost no technical constraints. In fact, players have been able to add their own tracks to games for many years at this point. This means that the composer's imagination is the only limitation. So, what's your favorite soundtrack from any video game? Do you think music in games had more relevance in the past than current titles? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching, make sure you hit the bell button and subscribe to this channel so you never miss an update. Have a good one.